Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about The Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield. Not that there's a lot to say, it's just some thoughts on it. Now, um, both of the games have been in development now for a number of years. Neither game seems to be coming out anytime soon. I think Starfield slated for November 2022. So it's over a year away. And it's been in development for an extraordinary length of time. And while people think, yeah, that means there's a lot of development got into it, I'd like to just raise some doubts about that. <clears throat> now, um, we both know Bethesda have uh, gone, you know, been brought up by Microsoft. Well, their parent company has, so they have. Things have changed in that department. We both know they've been working on, well, we all know they've been working on Elder Scrolls um, Online and Fallout 76 Online. And I think that's where the bulk of the development time has gone. I think this is why these single player games are taking a back seat because it's all down to this. Now, what you might not know is when they release a game, they don't make most of their profits off of the game. They make most of their profits off of the add-ons they sell for the game. This has become the rule. This is why there's so many DLCs for games now. It's because most of the profits they get are done after the game's release from DLCs. And these um, online games just allow them to just keep making them. Sometimes it's worth it, most of the time it's not. But it fills the demand that players want. If someone wants them, they pay for it. This system, though, has basically replaced modding because now you get what they call official mods from the developers in the form of downloadable content. And you get you have to pay for it. It takes a fun out of modding when they do that, like, but still, it's their game. And sometimes it's nice just to have it built officially, right? Anyway, the um, the whole start there Starfield thing is supposed to be like the Elder Scrolls in space. I'm a sci-fi nut. I love sci-fi more than I like fantasy. So I should be really into Starfield when it comes out. Um, whether I will be depends on the game, but um, yeah, it should be right up my alley. So that's one area of interest I have. I'm not sure if you share it, but I definitely have that area of interest. And it's definitely something I'll be checking out. When we work in times limited, so, you know, obviously I won't be able to dedicate the kind of time I used to have, but I should be able to do something. And hopefully, because I'm earning, I can actually afford to take out the um, Adobe's offer for their monthly fee for all their tools. So that'd be good to have a nice set of tools for a change. So yeah, so that's looking good. Elder Scrolls 6. Now, my understanding of the Elder Scrolls 6 is um, they're still basically working on concepts. In other words, they've got ideas they want to do, but they're not sure how it's going to work. So they're having people prototype the ideas. This is my understanding, which means they're not even close to developing it yet. They, they literally just say, we want to do this, this and this, because it shows how it, how it might work. And uh, that means they, don't, they probably don't have a creation sheet, creation, creation kit 2 yet, or they haven't added the appropriate features to that yet. This is really, really early. I mean, we're talking like they're still designing the game, basically. Designing and prototyping, designing and prototyping. That's what it sounds like to me. And I think I'm right, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's exactly the state they're in. Now, I know it's disappointing to wait this amount of time because we're supposed to have had another Scrolls game out by now, right? But obviously it hasn't arrived and uh, it looks like it'll be waiting another five, ten years, you know, for the next one. So it could be, you know, that. But on the other hand, right, Bethesda making more games in a similar style by introducing Starfield, so you have Starfield, Elder Scrolls, Fallout. That isn't a bad thing. A bit of choice always goes down well. And companies that don't change die. And how many companies here want to see Bethesda? Oh, company, how many players want to see Bethesda go under? I certainly want to see Bethesda remain a unique entity. Because if they start letting the side down, Microsoft will just absorb them and they'll be gone. And their games may or may not turn up on cut price you know, offers on their Xbox system, you know, in the future. But there'll be nothing new. 
I mean, look at Lionhead. You know, they've been they made they made a few good games, and where are they now? Black and white hasn't been seen since they got absorbed by Microsoft. Um, Mechoid disappeared for quite a while before reappearing again by other developers. So it's usually a death nail for companies when they're absorbed by companies like Microsoft, Activision, whatever. I mean, you look at The Sims and um, all the other games produced, you know, I'm not trying to remember the name of the company now. I've brought every game they owned as well. Yeah, but anyway, Maxis. All right, I had Simair, you know, Sim everything, Simant, you know, Sim City, The Sims. But they've got absorbed pretty much by year as well. They're pretty much gone now. Uh, so it's not a good thing. We we really do want to see um, we want to see Bethesda survive, and if that means you know taking more time on the online games, fair enough. Some of them are quite good. I mean, the Elder Scrolls Online doesn't feel anything like the Elder Scrolls to me. It isn't an Elder Scrolls game, I would say, and uh, I don't know how they could call it one. To be honest, I mean, some of the quests are very Elder Scrolls like, but that's where the similarity ends in my book. Um, Fallout 76 I've never played so I couldn't tell you uh, but yeah that I think is where their main focus is now because the DLC dragging the dosh you know the shop the much contested and uh, criticised shop but one of the reasons that um, I don't buy as much of the Elder Scrolls Online is because I feel I've been forced to uh, invest in more and more coins and I don't like that I don't like that. I like to think I brought the game, I get the whole game, and I can play the whole game. I don't need to keep spending more and more money. Plus, when you buy um, areas of the world, right, you pay full price. And then if you, the next one comes out, that one's absorbed into a previous pack, and you pay full price again. You know, And if you were to buy the, the whole package, you're paying a bit more than full price right, to get the full package. And I'm thinking, well, I've already paid for half the content in that. Why am I paying full price when I own most of the stuff in that? Just the one package that I might have missed. The one DLC I might have missed when it was first released. And, uh, yeah, I've got a feeling it's all just one big scam. So I'm very critical of Elder Scrolls Online, even though I do like the quests, because the quests are quite fun. Although, to be honest, I did um, the Skyrim ones. I can't really call it now, and a few of us, and it just felt very samey to me. It's like they need to bring in a new crew, you know, to do these quests because they've run out of ideas. Uh, I never ran out of ideas when I was making quests, you know, for my mods. I mean, I, I made all the usual grindy quests, you know, to pad it out and stuff like that. But I always had ideas, and quite frankly, the ideas led on to other ideas, led on to other ideas. So the more ideas he had, the more ideas it created. <laughs> it was like a never-ending story. Thing. It was an upside-down pyramid. You start one idea, and it just gets wider and wider until there's thousands of them. <clears throat> and then you're interacting, and it's just, it just turns into a big mushroom cloud, basically, like a nuclear thing from one spark. So I don't see how um, developers can go can go from that many ideas to just the same idea in every DLC, you know. When obviously you, if you do the ideas right and you you, you lay down a few good storylines, it mushrooms into a whole world of its own. So I suppose they've got to try and keep it on track with the Elder Scrolls law, but I'm not seeing any sign that they're actually taking that seriously. To be honest, you know, a lot of the stuff they're talking about. It's not mentioned in any other game, you know. It's admittedly, you know, Morrowind was the biggest source of information, and most of Skyrim comes from books added to Morrowind. Um, Oblivion dealt with more or less fairly unique. Um, it just dealt with the Empire because that was a big factor in Morrowind. So again, Empire's use in Morrowind, well, in Morrowind, is appears in the next game. So they haven't really added anything new since Morrowind they've just been reusing Morrowind's law and everything else and I think now they've got to the point where they have to create something new and they're struggling so I think my advice to Bethesda is go to Black Mash and just get your feet wet you know or veiling wood and climb up the trees it's instantly going to change your view of the world and your game when you're making Vikings and you're making Rome stuff and elf stuff, it tends to fit in a certain theme. Get away from that. All right? 
go into the marsh, go into the forest, you know, even deserts. And you, you, you're suddenly thinking in different terms. So you get away from empires that we know about into empires we don't know about. Uh, there'd be Aztecs. Anywhere, anywhere, yeah. Starfield, yeah. That's, I mean, if it's, it's out on time, it's 18 months away. Um, I think we'd be seeing more from it though if it, if it was closer to release. And we, so I've got my doubts whether we'll see it next Christmas. You know, the Christmas after this one, but we'll see. One thing I do think, we're going to need a computer upgrade. And the way the thing's going at the moment, and this might be affecting their, um, you know, their desire to release games right now, is you can't get graphics cards for new computers at the moment. They're all dried up everywhere. So if someone, if a game came out and needed a fast graphics card, how are you going to play it? Because you can't get the hardware needed to play it. So it's a bad time to release games anyway. Sad, but true. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Let us know what you think. But I do think they're working on the online games most, mostly because that's where the dosh is. See you later.